Bed slingers are a terrible machine design. This includes enders, pruces, and anything else where the platform moves. All right, so just hold off just one second before you comment on this. Here's the reason why bed slingers are a bad machine. If you have a machine that is dependent upon being very consistent, very controlled, you cannot have the foundation of it move back and forth. This is the problem with bed slinger machines, is that 3D printers are very susceptible to, susceptible to airflow and to the stability of the system, rattle and motion inside of the system. A bed slinger is terrible at both of these. The reason being is that as you have a bed moving back and forth, you are essentially waving your part through the air which means that you have lost much of the control that you would have had over the shrinkage and of the bed adhesion that you can have from just having the bed set and laying down material on it. So this back and forth motion actually creates a cooling component that you're not really generally aware of. Now this doesn't matter for materials like PLA and even kind of PETG, but it does have issues with higher performance materials that are more susceptible to airflow like ABS. But since these bed slinger machines are generally used in the hobbyist world, it's not that big of a deal because almost everybody is using PLA. But the other issue with these machines, especially if you're building them yourself, is that back and forth motion, the bed is generally set on about four spring compressed screws. Those springs are not a solid feature. Therefore, again, you have a part moving back and forth and as the part grows, you have this mass moving back and forth that is not set on a solid structure. Therefore, when you hit the end, it bounces on the springs that it's sitting on. A way to fix this is to compress the springs quite a bit and springs have gotten better over time, but it's still a fundamental flaw with the machine that has had to be compensated for in software and control hardware and just making sure that everything is perfectly tuned all the way through. It's just not necessary though. The last issue with bed slinger machines is that they are limited in the size and the height of the part that they can make because the bed is moving back and forth. As that part increases in mass, it becomes more difficult to move it back and forth, which again messes with all of your control software on the machine because it's used to having an empty bed and moving at some acceleration. But as soon as there's more mass on there, you have it hit the end and it bangs and moves and then hits the end and it bangs and moves. Or as it moves back and forth, the part, the bed that your part is stuck to is moving underneath it. Why would you build a machine where the part needs to be stayed adhered to a platform, but then you move that platform around so that the part can become unstuck. And that becomes a bigger issue as the parts get heavier. Last, as the part gets taller, since you have this banging happen because you're moving the whole part around that's getting heavier and tougher to move, as you get taller, you now have an instability. If you're making a tall, thin part that has to be stuck to the bed, you're moving the base first and the part is following along. If you're making a tall part, you're basically putting it on top of an earthquake as you're printing it. Those are kind of the four main reasons Bed slinger machines are just fundamentally flawed. It is amazing how good of quality of parts come out of them in the consumer machines like Enders and Prusas and those kinds of machines, but they are just fundamentally flawed and it's a testament to the controls teams at those companies that they have made such good quality parts from those machines. But a way better mechanical design is actually a standard Cartesian, like what Ultimaker does where the bed lowers down, or simpler style machines where the bed is fixed and then the gantry itself with the nozzle moves so that the bed is a solid, stable feature that the part is able to rest on rather than being shook on. So that's the problem with bed slingers. Let us know down in the comments other things that you might want us to take a look at and kind of do a design analysis of or other types of machines that you'd like us to kind of look at and break down. Have a great day, everybody.